Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Thought I'd do something a little different today. I bought these, and yeah, I'm letting the thick stuff go from the bottom to the top. I let these apricot nectars I bought at the local grocery store. About the time the virus hit, I was like, hmm, that looks pretty good. I wonder what maybe like a cider would taste like using just apricot. It's curious. So I bought it and then I procrastinated. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Huge, huge response on subscriptions. I definitely appreciate it. That helps a million times over. Um, today, we're going back to my roots of kind of being a mad scientist and seeing where we go. This is so simple. I call it so simple, it's stupid. Just got a gallon jug, star sand it, rinsed it out. Don't know how it would impact it. So I'm just literally going to put the apricot in here. I'm gonna drop actually what we were expecting to drop in here. I did some research. I didn't just do this on a whim. After I bought the apricot, about a week ago, I did the research. And most people seem to be in agreement on certain things. One, to clarify it, I should probably drop in about a quarter teaspoon of pectin. So there we go, there's the pectin. Yeast nutrient probably is needed throughout, but I'm gonna dump just a tiny bit in right now to get things off to a nice start. There we go, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, if that. And I was trying to find a good acid blend. This North, North Mountain seemed pretty decent, and then I realized I had some other product from them. Although people did mention that the foil cover does not stick and doesn't seem to be stuck when they open it, which mine wasn't either. There's a quarter teaspoon, but it doesn't smell, doesn't look bad, doesn't seem to have any issues. Figure we do that, then when we dump this stuff in here, we'll be all good. So first we'll just take the apricot nectar. And I know you're all probably dying to know what's in it. Ah, of course our pick up the wrong side. Also, instead of just showing bitter reality brewing, throw up something a little more classic for those of us who remember, but there's Mario Brothers at Galaga up for a previous video. But it's just water, apricot puree from concentrate with sugar, malic acid, natural flavor, absorbic acid, which is vitamin C which it says is vitamin C. I've already star sand everything. I probably should have star sand the top of this, but I think we're okay. Worst case, I'm out a gallon of apricot and a tiny bit of miscellaneous. I know everybody likes to reconstitute their yeast. So I'm kind of goofing off. So I'm not going to get all that fancy. It's D47. I will at least, because it's been sitting. It's been sitting in my fridge, but it's been sitting. Let's sprinkle a little bit of this in there. I bought the yeast actually for some meads I want to make and I haven't made. Another thing I've been procrastinating on. There we go, that's more than enough yeast. Oh, don't want to spray stars in Just want to do more apricot. And I know it's not all going to fit because if I do, we're going to have a bubble over. Okay, and just because I know there was apricot sitting on the bottom still on this one, shake it up a little. It smells nice. Maybe I'll drink the last little bit, see how it tastes. I can compare the flavor of it to the actual cider or whatever we end up making. Hooch. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's probably good. I don't really wanna go nuts and I can measure this out to see where we're at. Another little thing that I used to do when I did a lot of one gallons is literally just take a Sharpie and write on the bottle. So apricot and apricot. I write whatever is in the bottle on two sides so if it gets wiped off somehow, it will dry and it won't wipe off easy. You'll have to use a dry erase or a little scrubby sponge and it'll come right off instantly. So we have that. Let's do this though, which I probably should have done in the first place, which we're gonna need to aerate it anyways. Okay, when star sand and washed and rinsed, let's see what our gravity is. Probably should have done that earlier. And yes, my hands were pretty much covered in the star sand, so I'm not too worried. 
at least not for this right moment. Probably have too much. Ah, of course I do. If you have a hydrometer and you don't have a clear glass container for reading your hydrometer, get one. Those dark, funky plastic things suck. I can't see them. I can't read anything. I can't tell what the hell I'm looking at. Okay, so we're sitting just a hair. Five, six. I'm okay with that. I'm not going for crazy alcohol. I just want to taste the, see what happens. Yes, this is a no-no, but it's all sterile. I'm all good with it. And like I said, we're having fun. Worst loss is a gallon of apricot juice, which is watered down. So, okay. I'm gonna say that's aerated. Put that bad boy on there. And we'll see what happens. It's that easy. You could buy tons of different juices and see what happens. But if it comes out and we like it, we can do more, a lot more. So there we go. Apricot, cider, call it whatever you want. I mean, I could make apricot wine. I, could, you know, I used a wine yeast. Okay, it's been a little over a month, a month since I let this apricot juice, basically 100% apricot juice, through some, I believe it was D47 in there. Let it ferment, a whole gallon of it. I've cold crashed it. I put a little bentonite. I've done a few others. I've done a little gelatin. It's just not clarifying. I mean, I've got this, looks really, really clear. And then about halfway down, I've got pulp. And in the very bottom, I've got a nice packed yeast pack. So we're just gonna go ahead and move it. And we're gonna move it to a keg. I've taken a few little samples. I think it tastes great. Somebody did say it was a little tart. I'm like, it's apricot. It's supposed to be a little tart. I'm like, hell, you want me to add some cranberries to it too? I will. I love cranberries. So it's got a little, little sweet, a little tart. It's already cleaned yesterday, but, well, two days ago. But that's a little star sand in there, a little water. Yes, I dumped it out on my counter. I don't know how many home brewers out there uh, try to get things done before their spouse gets home? Mine's running around, so. Okay, so we're going to expose a little bit of this to oxygen, which I kind of have no choice, but I don't think it's going to last that long. I have a feeling it's going to get it, they say, consumed at a very high rate of speed. I don't remember the gravity we took originally, so I'll have to look. Put the original gravity up there for you. Yes, it's a turkey baster, aka beer thief, wine thief, apricot juice thief apricot cider, apricot wine, whatever you want to call it. Let's <laughs> just say this is very dry. Okay, I'm back with my secret weapon. When you get old or older, your eyesight sucks. We were orig originally at 1.056. We are now at, let's say 9.7. So we're at 0.997. Yeah, I'm gonna go with dry. Nice and dry. Put on the paper towel so it doesn't get broken. It has a place to drip. We'll deal with it later. Let's pour this in as slow as we can. We're gonna create some bubbles, but hopefully not a lot. Now we're definitely disturbing the pulp, but I'm kind of done trying to get that out of suspension. It smells amazing. So I'm good with the smell. The smell is great. Okay, we've already purged this bad boy. Just the CO2. And I didn't purge it all. So let's get rocking and rolling. I 
had to give up a little apricot there. I had way too much air. <clears throat> and we're on. Let's get the paper towels out of my way. Let's rock and roll. If anybody has a really great way of clarifying beyond five months, which is what somebody told me, let it sit at close to freezing temperature for five months. Yeah, no, no, I don't have that kind of patience. Oh yeah, it's getting a little thick. Very cold. Definitely got a little tartness, but it's very, very nice. Get that carbonated up and see exactly how nice it is. It's gonna be like an apricot cider carbonated. I like it carbonated. At the very end of our apricot cider, apricot wine, whatever you want to call it, I basically just took two half gallons of apricot juice that I got at the grocery store and said, hmm, I wonder what that would taste like. And I held on to them for a while and then finally, you saw we put in a gallon jug, threw in some D47 wine yeast basically, and let it ferment. Actually, it tasted pretty good on the little samples. The one problem we had, even using different types of clarifying gelatin, bentonite, I just couldn't get the apricot pulp, should we say, to fall all the way out of suspension. So I definitely have some of that in the keg. We did a one gallon keg, I carbonated it, it's probably pretty close to where it needs to be on carbonation. Things to look out for, you don't want sodium benzate, potassium sorbate, things that are okay, absorbic acid, potassium metabasulfate, if I can say that word, uh, pasteurized, it's fine. If you, you find a juice and it doesn't have those other types of, you know, things that can kill and are designed to kill yeast, then go for it, try it. Each are gonna be a little different. Some are gonna taste better than others. Some of the blends taste great. Some of the standalones taste great from what I've seen, but you know, this is just pure apricot juice, so. And it's definitely not filtered because I just stuck it all in the one gallon keg, but towards the end, it'll probably be very clear because the, the top was a clear and the bottom was a little on the pulp side, but it's carbonated, apricot pulp. It smells really, really good. I will say the first samples were a little tart, but I'm okay, hell, I'll put cranberries in there. I love it tart. Okay, because of the pulp, it's definitely got more of a mouthfeel than the little samples I took of the clear stuff. Smooth, very smooth. It's actually not as tart with the pulp mixed in. Without the pulp, it was a little more on the tart side, but I like it tart. And it's still very nice and sweet. Definitely fermented nice. I'll try to put up what the ABV was based on throughout the video where we mentioned the original gravity and the final gravity. But yeah, very drinkable, very drinkable. It's only a gallon. You know, sometimes you just gotta experiment, try something new, see what it does. I'm kind of dying now and chomping at the bit of doing some of the blend juices because I've seen some people get some really good results out of those. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and thank you again for all the great support.